Without a shadow of doubt, the most powerful adjustment tool in Photoshop is Curves. Once you master this tool, you're able to make very precise tonal adjustments and also color corrections to any part of the image. So let's have a look and see how they work. We're going to go up Image Adjustments and then we're going to open up the Curves dialog box. Let's just drag it over to the corner here. And let's talk a little bit about how it works. Basically, if we look at the curves right now, ignore everything except for this little line across the bottom here. Notice it goes from solid black to solid white with gray in between. This tells us this is the tonal range we're working on. Now look at this diagonal line. As I move my eyedropper over the image and click and drag, you'll notice you'll see it move around. Let me start on this grayscale. I'm going to start at the black and notice as I slide it across that circle moves up and down on that diagonal. And so if you look at where that circle is right now and then you follow it directly down to that gray bar that you see inside the curves dialog box, notice that it's exactly the same shade of gray that we're clicking on in the image. If you looked at it from here. Now I can add that point by simply holding down the control key that would be command on Mac and clicking. Now it adds that point. So if you look where the eyedropper is right now and then follow it from here down to there, that's the same shade of gray. If I go to the other end and I click on a lighter gray, notice the shade here, look at it here, follow it all the way down and you see it's the same shade of gray. Now this is the input. The input means this is what you get, the image, and you're putting it into curves. Now once you change something in curves, then the result is going to be your output. And I say output because then you're putting it out. So you're bringing in the image, adjusting it, and then putting out the adjustment. So if you look at where it says output here in curves, notice there's another grayscale. goes from black up to white. Now if you follow this from any point across to where it meets and then you go down, it's identical. That means that the input is the same as the output at every point. Now if you want to show more of these, just hold down the Alt key and click. You can show a bigger grid. Follow to any point. Notice that the input equals the output. That's why that line is perfectly diagonal. Now if we change something, for example, right now we're looking at this point here. What if we want to brighten up this point? Well, what we do is we click and we drag up. Now notice that everything that was this shade has now become brighter. That's because if you follow the input now, and then go across to the output, now it's further up on the grayscale. Now the output is a brighter, so we've mapped it, we've changed this shade of gray to this shade of gray, so it's now brighter. So that's basically how curves work. Now let's look at it again. This time I'm going to add some points. I'm going to hit the control key and I'm going to click on each one of these shades of gray. Notice as I do, because this is actually divided, equally into these different shades, notice that we've added these different points at equal distances. And if we take one of these points, pull it down, notice it darkens it. So right here, this shade of gray that you see there has now been mapped in almost black. And then if we pull it up, we get the opposite. Notice how it affects it. So as you see, we have very precise control over different portions of the image. All right, let's clear everything that we've done right now. We're going to do that by holding down the Alt key. And notice the Cancel will change to Reset. So now that we've worked on the grayscale and you have an understanding of how curves work, let's actually use it on the image. Say there's a certain tone that you want to adjust. This is how you would typically do it. You would typically find the tone that you want to adjust, like say here we want to darken this. I'm going to hit Control and then click. Notice it adds that point there, and I can take that point and I can drag it down 
And notice it doesn't just darken that area, it darks the whole, darkens the whole image because you see this curve that brings it in a steady way. And the reason it brings it smooth like that is so we don't get banding in the image. Because if I grab it here and I pull it up very sharply, notice we can get this very sharp increase. And if I pull it back there, so there we go. Now you're going to start to see banding in that image. So let's just undo that. And we're going to drag it. Notice as I drag it away, it can take away those points. Now I can click up here and start to flatten it out a little bit. And the same with here. I can flatten it out a little bit. And then we get more of the adjustment in that region without affecting everything else quite so badly. And we can change it. So that's one way of working with curves. Let me show you some common curves. I'm just going to reset this again. A very common thing to do in curves is to actually look for the Y point. Let's grab this and we can slide that across. So we're setting that to the Y point and then we're going to set that to the black point. What we're doing is just bringing them to the beginning and the end of the histogram. Now, here's a common curve. It's known as an S curve. And what this does is this increases the contrast of the image. So what we're going to do is we're going to take it about a quarter of the way back and pull it down just slightly. Notice that that darkens the shadows. And then we're going to go to this other side and then pull it up a little bit. That brightens the highlights. And if we over-exaggerate this, which we can do right now, let's over-exaggerate it a bit. There we go. It's a very contrasty image now. And notice that it forms this shape of an S. Now, when you're working curves, a little bit goes a long way. You want to be subtle. But if you notice here, we can look at the preview before and after, and you can see it's made quite a tremendous difference to the image. All right, I'm going to reset this one more time. And I'm going to show you a wonderful feature that's been added to CS4. We now have this click point where we can click here, and then we can find a portion in the image, and we can just click and drag down to darken that particular tone. We can find another portion and drag it up to brighten that particular tone. So this is pretty much the same as hitting the control key and clicking and dragging up and down on the curve, but rather than dragging up and down here, we're dragging up and down on the image. You need to be a little bit careful though because <laughs> a little bit does go a long way. And say right now, say we're working here and we've darkened this portion. What if we think, you know, we'd rather darken a different portion of the image? Well, what we can do is we can just take this and we just drag it along the curve here. Just drag it to the drag it down and then we can drag that point. See that? So now we're taking a darker point and now we're just darkening that very dark portion of the image. All right, let me cancel this once more. Now I'm going to show you another technique which is known as a lockdown curve. The lockdown curve is when you want to uh, target one specific tone. Say for example, you want to target this region right here, or actually let's go for this region right there. So I'm going to hit control and I'm going to click. And notice that this is our portion here. Now, as you know, when we pull that up or we pull that down, it affects the whole image. So what we want to do is make it where we just adjust just that region. So we're going to go maybe to right to the edges of this, um, this other block, and we've added two other points. Now, what it's going to do is it can constrain the movement in here. But because it works very rubber bandery, <laughs> I don't know if I've just invented that word, but notice as I pull this, it stretches it out the other sides. And what that does is that it just gives it a more, um, tries to smoothen it out so we don't get banding in the image. Well, what we want to do is put a second point just outside of those. And try not to move the image. Try and keep those in a neutral position. Now what we've done is we've added the two points and what this is going to do is it's going to lock down our movement in here. So now notice this, we can move without affecting a lot of the rest of the image. So this allows us now to target a specific region and just adjust that inside the image without affecting the rest of the image. All right, now I'm just going to cancel out of here and we're going to look at the curves adjustments. Because a better way to work, rather than working with the curves, which we can at any time, it's better a lot of the time to work inside the adjustment panel. So we can click here to add a curve, or we could actually select it from down here. We could choose curves. Either way, doesn't really matter. We've got a curves adjustment layer now. 
and this is going to work exactly the same way as the other curves did. And what we can do is we can hit this little button here which will increase the size. We can also hold down the Alt key or the Option key and click to add more finer grid. And at the same time this is going to work the same way. We can work in here with the curves. We can add a little contrast adjustment. We can grab our little clicker here and we can darken those portions. We can grab our highlights, we can lighten those up. So we can work exactly the same way and to be honest it's better to work this way inside the adjustments because at any time we can go to our layer, we can turn it off, we could drop the opacity which will lessen the effect but still apply that curve and it's always going to be adjustable which means anytime I can click on that adjustment and there it is we can change it so that'll move with the image. So that gives you a little bit of an idea of how to work with curves for making tonal corrections. What about making color corrections? Okay, notice right now it says RGB. We can click here and we can work in the different channels. So if we choose red, now we can work in a red channel and it will only adjust the reds. So let's find a portion in here which has a lot of the reds and we're just going to click. We're going to control click to add that. And now if we want to lessen the reds, we can pull it down. If we want to increase the reds, pull it up. In fact, we want to lessen it a little bit. Let's have a look at the green channel. If we have any green in here, say like this area here, let's click and we're going to add that green. If we want to lessen the green, let's just pull that down a little bit. Increase the green, we pull it up. So this is, a, like I said, goes, a little bit goes a long way. And if you want to make a very precise adjustment, add the point. And then use the arrow keys in the keyboard, just the down arrow, just to give it a slight nudge. Sometimes that's a better way of working. And we're going to go into the blue here. And let's see if there's any blues in this image. We're just going to click and add it right there. So there's the blues. So maybe we could increase our blues just by nudging it up a little bit. And that just gives us a nice color correction. And of course, at any time, we can go back to the RGB. And notice now you can see the adjustments inside the individual color channels. So let's have a look and see what this adjustment's done. Let's have a look at it before and after. See, so we've made a little bit of a contrast adjustment and a little bit of a color adjustment. So you can see the curves are very powerful. But as I said before, a little bit goes a long way. So tread very gently with this tool. It's a very powerful tool.